All right, hello, and welcome to the 21st episode of my Retro City Rampage clone in Unity tutorial. Today, we're going to be covering minimaps. So, I've not actually seen that many tutorials on this. So, hopefully, this will be my first, or not first, but a good one for you. I'll just basically show you the principle of it and stuff. But first off, let me show you how it works. Show it, basically. And as you can see, We've got like a map, we've got a marker for the player, we've got markers for civilians, enemies, and cars. Uh, let's see, and as you see, as we kill the enemies and civilians and whatnot, uh, I think I've still got that ammo. Wait, where's that vending machine? I'll need to buy more ammo. Do not have any money, fuck. Uh, yeah, but you get the point. When I kill them. Uh, I wonder what happens if I go in a car. Oh god, that went horribly wrong. Uh, yep. Okay, so it just takes the player priority. That's good. So yeah, you can see we've got cars. We've got red seas of cars. Orange seas of civilians, just because that might get confusing, but whatever. And the turquoise P is player. So yeah, let's show you the theory of how this works. Okay, so now I'm going to basically explain the theory of how the minimap works. So basically, we are adding another camera to the scene. But instead of, say, the player's camera being a small one like this, you know, where you've got the player in the middle, and that's it. This uh, second camera, which will be the minimap camera, works a bit differently. So it's, first off, it's a lot bigger. So in this particular case, I've made it four times the size of the player's camera. But since it's uh, not the main camera, as basically you have a camera dot main which specifies what the what's actually rendered to the player. Uh, this camera, well, since it isn't, it won't be rendered to it, so the player can't see it. Which, uh, yeah, so we don't need it to be. Sorry. So the player, it's not camera.main, so this isn't the main view of the player. This black square here is. But we have the second camera, which is bigger, which is also attached to the player, but can show a wider area. But since it's not camera.main, we can't see it. It's not rendered to the player. So what we have to do is we have, you, there's something called a render texture, which is uh, basically a texture. And the camera renders to that instead. So, basically that, uh, uh, I'll show it you in the inspector actually. So you can see here, we've got a target texture, which is the minimap render texture, which is in the project files. And we've got, the main camera does not have that. And you can see the difference between the two camera views. All right. So I'll just go back to GIMP. So the render texture, with the minimap, uh, like the camera view for the minimap, is then sent to our GUI script, which then uh, draws. Well, okay, I don't need to explain how G drawing GUI works because we've done that. But yeah, basically, the camera then sends the what it sees to the render texture. The render texture is stored then in is accessed by the GUI script, and that is what draws it in the top left corner of the screen for us. Now, there's also uh, aside from this, there's also the stuff for uh, you know how there's like icons instead. Well, basically, cameras have something called a, a culling mask, which basically defines what's rendered and what's not. So, as you can see. On the minimap camera, which I should actually rename, so on it, minimap camera, basically we're not rendering the collision layer NPC weapons or NPCs, but we are rendering the GUI icons, which are the C's and E's and P's that you can see in the camera preview. But if we go into the main camera, we're rendering, we are rendering the NPC weapons and NPCs, but not the GUI icons, because we don't need to see them. 
So that's basically how that works, if I can go back to GIMP. So yeah, uh, so basically you can select which layers you want the camera to render and which you don't. And then, like, just as you would like for normal sprite effects and whatever you can do, uh, you can like you can have animated icons or maybe disappearing when you get near them or something or whatever you want, just by assigning them to normal game objects because that's all the icons are. They're just game objects that aren't rendered by the main camera. And hopefully that made sense. And I will see you on to showing the code, basically. Bye. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the code, basically. So I've got a little two-mention list of this, of what I'm going to do, so I don't forget anything. So, so there's basically just the icon monitor, which controls whether it should be showing a GUI icon. So it's simple, really. Uh, it's just generic between any icon, so it checks if the game object is either tagged a dead person, which means it was a person, an enemy, or a civilian, and you've killed it, then it'll stop rendering it. Or if you've killed the car that it was in and it's tagged a wreck, in which case it will also stop showing the sprite. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, uh, play a GUI. So as you can see, we've got a public render texture for the minimap texture, which is assigned in the inspector. Where's the minimap camera? So here we've got the target texture minimap. Uh, minimap. Yep, you can see it here. Basically, it's a 400 by 200 texture, and these are the settings. It took a bit to of like just playing around to get it right, the right uh, scale, so it looked normal. And yeah, and this is then assigned to the player. Where's the GUI script? Here. So it's been up here. And then what you can do is where is it? Uh, where is it? Sorry. Uh, yeah. Basically, you can just draw it like you would a normal texture 2D, which we use for the rest of GUI. So it's pretty simple, really. Uh, it's drawn, drawn in the two different sections. So it's drawn here in the same place we had the placeholder. And it's drawn, where is it? Here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Now, what other changes do we need to make? Uh, PC AI. Uh, basically, there was a problem of when the uh, uh, two things you might have noticed. Well, one thing, but one is that when we're like walking around, you can see like the icons just appearing out of nowhere. So as you can see, like they just despawn when you get too far away and respawn and just spawn out of nowhere here, you can see. Uh, that is basically just because of the distances that uh, I've set up for when the NPCs despawn and when the chunks appear and disappear and stuff. So that is just, uh, that can be fixed by just uh, changing the values for like if the NPC is X far away from a, uh, the player, then it'll despawn. Or if the chunk you are within this distance of a chunk, then it'll activate. That's pretty much it. So you can play with the settings to your heart's content with that. Uh, I'm just so yeah. Uh, but if say a chunk is despawned and the NPC is going to a target in it, uh, I added this method basically saying if it's basically an NPC, so if the target's null for the pathfind and alerted the player is false. And It'll basically just destroy the game object to create uh, to prevent errors occurring, uh, which we've added in a try statement here. Uh, I should probably add his target null there as well because that's supposed to go there. Oop. So I've added it in two places, I think. Yeah, so we've added like if we're trying to find a patrol point and we can't find one, then we just destroy it, or if like the target is null, like here. Basically, we just destroy the NPC if the target's null and it's not like trying to attack the player. Because if it is an NPC, like uh, an enemy, and it's trying to get to the player, then it should be fine. So, like, uh, it shouldn't like not be able to find a target because it'll either go to a car if the player's in a car, or just keep walking to the player. Or if it's too far away, it'll just get despawned. 
But for the NPCs, uh, the chunk they're in might despawn. So if they're, the point they're going to is also despawned, it'll return an error. So just doing this, it means, all right, we've not got a target anymore. Might as well destroy because chances are we can't be seen by the player, which is fair enough. Uh, what else? We've also added it. I've also added in, sorry. Uh, where is it? Basically, you might have seen in previous episodes, all the NPCs look like they were running around with Tommy guns, but they weren't facing the right way. Uh, that was basically because they didn't have a weapon controller on them. So now what I've done is I've basically created an unarmed weapon. Uh, if I can find where I put the weapons. Game controller. Yeah. Basically, it's not got a sprite. Uh, it only attacks once every hundred million seconds and it doesn't do any damage and yeah it doesn't have a GUI texture or anything so basically it's a blank slate that doesn't do anything in all for all intents and purposes because I don't think an NPC or enemy will be around long enough to use it uh, so yeah that is just basically a placeholder so they don't have a weapon on them and that is basically set added to the weapon manager I don't know if I had the weapon manager. I think I had the weapon manager. Yeah, I yeah, had that. Uh, so yeah, that was added uh, in this episode. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? I don't think there was anything. So, uh, uh, oh, uh, sprite render check on the NPC weapon controller. Uh, basically, it was on set weapons for... I think this was particularly when, when I was adding the... Uh, one second, train. When I was when I was adding the like unarmed weapon, sometimes it complained that it couldn't find the sprite renderer on the NPC's weapon controller. So basically, I just added another check. So like, if it's null, we'll find it again because obviously it hasn't got it from the start function for some reason. So I just added it there, and it's all good. So yeah, I think that's it for the code. Uh, onto the assembly. All right, uh, now we'll show you the assembly of how it is and all constructed in the engine. So basically, we've got another camera called Minimap Camera. This is attached to the player, so it'll basically just follow the player. But we've got like, its size is now 20, and we again, we changed the culling mask, so it doesn't render the NPCs, but it does render the icons, and make sure to take off the main camera to stop it, to check, uh, go on the main camera and check that you are basically check off GUI icons so you can, don't render them on the player's view because if we do, I'll just quickly show you that. Uh, GUI icons, yeah, you can see giant letters, which is not good. So, so yeah, uh, then basically you just create a render texture in your uh, project file folders or whatever. Uh, I think I had it in GUI textures, yep. So basically you create a render texture. I set it to 400 by 200 because that's the size I'm drawing it. And assign that to your player GUI script in the new public render texture variable. And then if you've got all the recs set up and whatnot, then that should draw there, which is good. Uh, is there anything else? I've also changed uh, two things, uh, made some prefabs for NPCs that won't attack you, and NPCs that will, basically. So there's two variations on, and yeah, and we also added the uh, map icons to the respective things that need to be shown on the map. So cars, uh, player, NPC, and the hostile NPC. So basically, that just shows you where they are, and we used a different. Uh, like letter for each of them and that'll be as well as the art because you can see they're just letters there's no other art other than that so oh i think there's been a traffic jam yep that's a traffic jam can we fix it let's get you oh. yep see we fixed the traffic jam but we may have run some people over boohoo oh that's a nice combo I should probably add a 
I'll probably do another episode fixing stuff, which was just a bit of a problem. But yeah. So that was this is the assembly and art. Sorry about that. Okay, so final product. Uh, I probably should maximize that actually. Wait. Right. No. Maximize on play, yes. And as you can see, we have a mini map. It shows us the players, civilians, and cars. Isn't that fun? So that's what we've learned to do today. Again, uh, adding effects to these or animations to the icons, uh, yeah, or whatever, would be very easy to do because, you know, it's just a sprite. You can, like, animate it or whatever. Uh, do whatever you want, but if you've got any... Again, I might do an episode, like, uh, playing about with the distances that things spawn and despawn, just because that might be useful. That might uh, expand the world a bit so it's more looping for the cars and whatnot. But yeah, uh, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Go check out Loud or Quiet and the Hotline Miami assets I put up and the prototype zombie game that I made, which isn't much, but it was made in five days, so I'm kind of proud of that. And yeah, goodbye.